Hello everyone, welcome and thank you so much for joining us. We are coming to you live from uh, uh, Germany and we are going to be talking about the World Democracy Day. Um, oh, welcome to this live debate. This is TW Africa and today we are celebrating World Democracy Day and we have a very, very strong uh, panelists who are going to be dissecting this very very important topic because when it comes to democracy it's a very very important topic especially now in Africa that we are seeing young people rising and trying to make their voices heard um, what does democracy actually mean not just to you as private individuals but to Africans as a whole that's why we have a panel of very very young people to talk about this I'm being joined uh, particularly by Mr. Simon Ekpa, who is a lawyer by training and profession. Um, he says that he is the designated prime minister of the Biafra Republic uh, government in exile. He's joining us from Finland. Good day to you, Mr. Simon. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much, uh, Mimi, and uh, thank for having me uh, on this program. I'm pleased to just correct one uh, something I did not uh, say, you know, it was Biafra people that elected me the Prime Minister of Biafra Republic of Neza. So just, just a, a correction there. Thank you. All right. So as well, we have uh, Mr. Tapang Ivo Tanku. He is uh, a former Fulbright scholar and an advocate for an independent state uh, called Ambazonia in Cameroon. That is the English, in the English-speaking part of the country. He is now joining us uh, from the United States of America. Good day to you. Ivo, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much, Mimi. Thank you also for having me on the show. And uh, of course, we are hoping to have other guests on the program today, but we are going to begin right away with you, Mr. Simon or Mr. Ekpa. Which uh, name would you prefer? Uh, you can just call me uh, Mr. Simon. Mr. Simon, tell me, um, what does democracy mean to you? Um, well, uh, what democracy mean to me uh, is exactly what we are enjoying in the Western world. What I enjoy in Finland is what democracy means for me. Supposed to be the government of the people, for the people, by the people, and for the people. But in Africa, I don't think the definition of democracy is what we have here today. And I'm very, happy, I'm very, very happy to be part of this particular program where we are going to enlighten people, especially those from the Africa, uh, you know, from the continent of Africa, to know that uh, we, the modern, uh, the new generation and the pan-Africanists are ready to change the paradigm shift, make a paradigm shift in African democracy. Thank you. And Mr. Uh, Ivo, tell us, What's your own perception of democracy? I, I look at democracy in terms of, I would, I, I would say, let me disagree a little bit with Mr. Simon, because I believe there is democracy in Africa today, although it is still very nascent, although we need to strengthen the institutions for this democracy, for the foundation of this democracy. The mere fact that we have an elevated freedom of speech the mere fact that we can communicate with our people, our loved ones back home, the mere fact that we have a diverse media prior to the 1990s when we had uh, privatized, I would say, uh, much more government-controlled media, the mere fact that we can spin up uh, revolutions using the social media, we can dislike government policies, we can influence government policies, this is a leap from the past years when we had dictatorships. Africa is steadily moving towards that path and we are on the track towards democracy. But we will not accept all of the Western forms of democracy that comes with sanctions, that comes with cultural norms, impositions. We need to tailor our own democracy to suit our cultural values. And then uh, I guess one of our uh, panelists for today has already joined us, Mr. Fabrice Lena. Mr. Fabrice Lena, if you can hear us, thank you for joining us. Good evening. Um, he's yet to join us. And talking about tailoring democracy in such a way that it can be beneficial for young Africans, I want to find out 
you are both uh, young Africans and you are in the diaspora. I don't know if you have followed uh, some of the agitations against uh, and for um, one of Africa's dictators, so to say. Uh, he's been in power for 30 years in Eritrea, the president of the country, um, where we saw people who are supporting and those who are not supporting the president. Young people were actually agitating abroad and they have been fighting there's been a lot of destructions and so on when we are talking about democracy where do you actually place um your level of agitation within this framework when we talk about democracy that question goes to you mr epa oh thank you very much uh, mimi uh before going to addressing that your question i would like to respond to my friend uh from Amazonia. Uh, he mentioned about tailoring uh, Africa democracy to suit our own, you know, way of life. And uh, maybe we have to tailor the Africa democracy uh, according to the norms and customs of Africa people. Uh, I, would very, I would be very pleased if, uh, you know, in his res next response, he can just mention one country in Africa that is practicing a true democracy and that is even close or closer to what he defined as a, as a, you know, what should be the true democracy for Africa, or to mention one Africa country that have tailored this particular democracy that suit their own custom and norms. None of any non country in Africa has actually done that. So, having said that, uh, when you look at the present democracy in Africa, I will take Nigeria for example. Nigeria, according to the African people, they say is the giant of Africa, I believe. So when we are making reference to Africa, Nigeria should be one of the, you know, the country that we, we can take solace from. So Nigeria, for example, in the last election, it is not just about last election, but in the last general election and the previous elections and other elections since 1999, every election, and to the court of law. Is that what we should be proud of to call a democracy? Where the people will go out to vote, they will be butchered. And then after that, one who may have not even participated in the election will be sitting somewhere in the name of being a judge. And then the people will go to the judge and the judge will decide who win election and who lost the election. This is happening almost everywhere in Africa. That is not a democracy. He is living in the United States, and I believe that uh, you know he should have you know give me a very good instances of where some of these kind of elections in the United States end up to the courts of law. We know that there are disputes sometimes arising from the elections. Maybe my lesson my practices or or someone will have a differ a divergent view about the outcome of the election. You you would like to seek a redress. But in every African country, almost every African country, there is always chaos, there is always killings, there is always bloodshed, bloodbath during the election. And those who arms, who have you know, you know, more weapons or more talks, political talks, always win the election. And he is from Cameroon, today fighting for Ambazonia. And in his own country, I believe the current president of Cameroon have been there for over 30 years. Every eight years or every four years, he imposed himself on the people of Cameroon. Is that what he should be saying? Africa is a good democracy and he is fighting for the freedom of Amazonian people. I want to also make one point here, you know, very clear today. It is only the Republic of Biafra, only in the history of Africa, that has gone closer to what we call democracy. Because in 1969, the Republic of Biafra drafted a constitution that was almost the best in the entire Africa. And so, Mr. Tepo, is this something that you want to step in and say? Yeah, it's something I would like to respond. Let please, it be please don't respond, but please. Yes. This constitution yes. of Biafra draws this particular uh, democratic principles from our custom our custom and the culture it is there yeah. so and because of this particular 
uh, drawing this particular solace from our culture and custom. The West, of course, they envied Biafra, and Biafra, you know, was defeated by, yeah. uh, by Western powers during the war between Nigeria and Biafra, genocide you know, war. So we know all this. It is in the history. Yeah, let me, let me, let me, let me. And that's, and that's the reason somebody like me is today pursuing the independent state of Biafra so that we are going to bring a true democracy to Africa where the voice of the people will be heard. And not just when you go to the ballot box, someone out there in the, in the court will now decide who become the winner. And even as that, the judges are corrupt. Yeah, let me address, let me address a key number of concerns raised by my uh, comrade, uh, Simon Ekpa. With all due respect, uh, when I talk about democracy as a whole in Africa, I'm talking about the evolution of democracy. You've mentioned Biafra being the first, or if not, one of the first democracies in Africa. I wouldn't maybe go down the lane to disagreeing with you on that point, because there could also be Ambazonia, that I would say the former British Southern Cameroons, that had one of the first constitutions in Africa. But first, let me say this. Democracy is measured. You measure democracy on a I would say a column of criteria, one of them being elections, the other being freedom of speech, the other being freedom of movement or maybe uh, free, so many criteria, human rights, respect and the rest. Polity four measures that. And for that reason, we have autocracies, we have anocracies, we have democracies, we have a couple of those stages that you can lead up or build up towards a democracy. Now, when you talk about culture, how do we marry democracy and culture in Africa? And you, you asked me to cite an example where we've had a perfect or a near perfect democracy married on its culture. I will cite South Africa, for example. I may not be a fan. I am a critic of homosexuality, LGBTQ+, and all of those things they call it. But South Africa has successfully embraced that culture and has, I would say, embrace democracy with its own culture that accept that acceptance to that particular uh, value you move over to botswana it's another democracy measured on the polity four with a near i would say above plus six or plus six points on the polity four scale well if you want to talk about countries that are emerging towards democracy but stifled by the west because of their own inherent cultural values they hold strong to there is uganda I may not be a fan of the Ugandan president who has been in power for God, so God, for God knows how long, neither Cameroon, but the fact that they hold strong to anti-LGBTQ plus cultural values will stand on the way of democracy if we don't integrate uh, our cultural values with the democracy we're talking about. Yes, I believe that wherever you sit, I believe that wherever you sit affects how you see it. If you sit from the West, you will see all the values, the cultural values of democracy as the best. If you sit from Africa, you say, well, I want freedom of speech, but well, I don't want this other uh, aspect of democracy. If you sit from Africa, you also say, well, I want freedom of speech, I want democracy, but I don't want to be sanctioned. Mr. Ivo, Mr. Ivo, yeah. can you hear me? Mr. Yes, Ivo, can you hear me? Yes, let me just come in briefly here. Earlier, when uh, Mr. Ekpa was talking, he mentioned the, um, the Biafra state, which... We all know it's, it's not yet recognized. Um, I agree. It's not yet I, I agree. It's not being recognized as a state. Do you think that you are being uh, I, I, uh, idealistic? Is it is it something that is realistic? Is it realistic when you are talking about uh, the Biafra state? Yes, um, Ambazonia is also in a similar <laughs> limelight. Ambazonia yes. is not recognized. Yes, Biafra is not recognized. Biafra These are all quasi states. We are moving towards in Africa. Biafra no, was we, recognized. We I was talking about Biafra, which Can was recognized by many countries in Africa. I'm not talking about the Biafra of today. I'm talking about Biafra that was recognized as an independent state by many nations in Africa. That's the Biafra I'm talking about. And let me also make it very clear that the country he mentioned, South Africa and Botswana, were all the white dominated countries in those days. And they come with the influence of the white. So we know, we're talking about Bia, we are talking about uh, Africa, Africa country, not those that were white dominated. No, but these are these are all African countries. We may want to go into we may want to go down. 
we may want to go down the rabbit hole of looking into who is the aborigines who are those uh, the real indigenous people that, that would be I another will, debate for another day example. i would want you to give me an example of one africa country that is closer to democracy what but about senegal what about senegal? Senegal? senegal can i say senegal yes, can i say ghana what about Sanders. ghana what about Sanders. senegal Sanders. Mr. Yeah, I've cited two Mr. examples. Mr. Ghana Mr. and Senegal are all examples that we yes. can look up to. Yes, yes. Can, can I come in briefly now and say that yes, let's just on. move yes. on because and and let because everything that we have been saying now, we've been going back into history, talking about what has happened in the past. Let us focus on the present because what is important is the now. What is happening today? And today is World Democracy Day. We want to see how young Africans can come together used such days to promote democracy on the continent to right. talk about how they can move actually move forward a lot is happening in africa when we talk about democracy today you mr simon and if you agree on one thing is the fact that is power to the people. to the people do you think that the people in africa today have the power with them mr the simon answer is no the answer is no from my perspective the answer is complete no and I'm going to give you instances. I will always use Nigeria as an example. Let, so me, answer, let no, me disagree. In Nigeria, today, in Nigeria today, when you come out as a citizen to demonstrate, you get killed by the military, by the police, as ordered by the leaders who were you know, democratically elected. Is that a democracy? The answer is no. Does it mean that poor belongs to the people? The answer is no. Now, if you go to Nigeria today and say you want to preach Biafra, like I'm doing now, I will get killed. Mr. Simon, let me just let me just let, step uh, in let me, now. Let but me you explain. Also, when we want to also, measure democracy based also, on the power of the people, uh, yes, uh, yes, yes, Mr. Simon, 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 M
And I've never, the the I've never the seen the democracy where I have never seen the democracy where people engage in non-violent strategies, but are being killed by their own regimes. The but that does not mean there is no democracy in Africa. There are other countries that are promoting and engaging in democratic practices. I wish Cameroon should follow this, the likes of Ghana, Senegal, for example, and even Botswana. Some of the school children are not being killed just by the government, uh, the government forces who are on the ground. Those uh, calling for lockdown, the separatists calling for lockdown. But this is not verified there. information. It's I not verified. Also, also involved. Of course, I am a journalist and I'm ca covering some of these things happening in Cameroon. But you, I'm I was also a journalist. Uh, 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 we have video evidence. We have the opportunity to correct. It's been documented. Today, Mimi, today, you are giving us the opportunity to bring the fact to the table. So you listen to us while we tell you what is on ground. But then I bring the, the question is, because I am here to continue the discussion you, and bring the question so that people can understand what is happening on the ground. People have so to, allow to explain. And because allow to explain. I am here to ask the question. We have just been joined by Mr. Fabrice Lena. He is a, a, a civil society actor in Cameroon. He's a politician. Mr. Fabrice, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. So can you allow us to explain that your question so that everybody Yes, of course. Yeah, of course, you talk about it, but Mr. Fabrice also has to join the discussion. Hello, Mr. Fabrice. How are you? Yeah, hi, Mimi. Um, greetings to you. Greetings to Mr. Tampang and um, um, uh, Mr. Ekpa. Um, glad to be part of your conversation. I, I must confess uh, the conversation is already unfolding and I'm joining late uh, because of one or two issues. Yes, um, it's an interesting issue to talk about World Democracy Day. And... Um, I have a quite different perspective to look at this because, of course, I am um, in support of democracy. Democracy is not about continent, it's not about country, it's about humanity, and it's about uh, human beings living uh, within few decades. And, of course, it's about constraining human desire to always be at the top and uh, constraining people to feel that... Um, the ability to manage a given institution, a given country population is best taught or embedded uh, in the capacity of maybe a singular person, party or group of people. So I would like to say that my perspective of democracy is that if it is practiced with, um, with and by people of good faith, then, of course, it will deliver to the people what they request. Good faith here has to do with someone who respects humanity. Basic principles of humanity is just the ability to say, um, I am a leader, and when I get to, to that position where I'm supposed to be in order to have the powers to decide upon the lives of people, I deliver to the people the basic things that um, uh, the documents that give me those powers uh, declare or define that I should do. This has to do with public goods, married goods, uh, welfare. Of course, whether it is the U.S., where Mr. Ivor is, or the UK, where you Mimi are, or whichever part of the world that is, of course, infrastructurally more than the African continents, they also had their own fair share of troubles and fights and struggles uh, in, in, in very long times before they could, of course, have these stabilities they are having today as far as infrastructure is concerned, not political stability, per se, or not that they are not also facing challenges today, but because uh, history is a process and human stability is a process, infrastructural development is a process. Africa is also passing through that process, you know. When you say uh, democracy is not for Africa, I wonder uh, the, 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 whether it's the Balichamba chiefdoms or the Bayangi custom of having a traditional ruler, the presence yes, Mr. or the Igbo yes, Mr. community. Mr. Fabrice, Mr. Fabrice, then, let me come in briefly now and ask a question. You are in Cameroon. You, are, you have visited the northwest, the southwest regions of the country. You have been visiting other parts of Cameroon. When we talk about democracy, do you see democracy on the ground? Do you see democracy in maybe Douala, Yaoundé, northwest, southwest regions of Cameroon? Is there democracy? Well, the question can be answered on two sides. Firstly, uh, the present regime in place do not respect democratic values. 
democratic principles and uh, what characterize a government to be called a democratic government. Right. The regime in place is absolutely out of these criteria, and we cannot, of course, call the kind of governance taking place in Cameroon a democratic one. That is what I should um, I should highlight. Whereas we understand that the constitution of Cameroon is functioning within the apparatus of a democracy. And of course, basic elements or to let's say one or two percent of facets of democracy can be seen as far as perhaps um, few private media, social media, and individuals are able sometimes to give their voice and say what they feel to say. Um, daring to say and having the ability to say one thing and not having the freedom after saying the thing is another thing. We shouldn't convince the two. Uh, having a law in place is one thing, and for those in power, not respecting the laws as far as implementation is concerned is another thing. So democracy in Cameroon is it's a complete failure really? as far as respecting the engagement by the parties concerned, which is those governing and those who are uh, to be governed is concerned. It's a failure. Let However, yes, also, let, let me, let me also, support, let me support let me what Fabrice is saying. Again, before we move to Mr. Tapang, Ivo, and Mr. Simon, they have also been discussing before you come in, we're actually talking about lockdowns and school boycotts. When you see that happening in the Anglophone regions of Cameroon, is that democracy before we go back to them? I would like to precise something here that um, be it the Ambazonian movement or the Biafran movement or the Cameroon government, I see a lot of loopholes as far as their strategies in leadership is concerned. Loopholes in the sense that there is no... Um, organization institution so independent to confirm the statistics that uh, those who claim are taking decisions on behalf of people can independently say yes lockdown is successful because the people have by this method proven to accept this decision that is what we call a colossal decision. In a complex society like Northwest and Southwest, where people have diverse views from different backgrounds, have different daily problems, you cannot authoritatively sit in the different context, different environment, different experience over time and say, of course, people are comfortable just by group discussions. Let me, or, let me disagree you know, with so Let me this, disagree this, with this, a little bit. This, this is, let, me, let me learn, let me learn. Just be patient to listen to me, sir. Uh, yeah, I, I've been seconds. listening to you Let's, patiently too. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just learning. Yeah, so I just want to say, you can't sit and say that everyone is comfortable when you have not proven this by any means which is universally accepted or which can be generally proven or which is scientifically proven, you know, or even if you want to go by our tradition, which uh, deity will say that, yes, these guys, what they are saying or what they are doing is correct. So it is relative. It varies from person to person. And that's why it does not have any generally accepted uh, method mechanism. Yes, Democracy yes, depends on... There are other measures you can Mr. use to... Yeah, there are other measures you can use to measure the success. Yes, yes, I mean, uh, uh, you know, quite, uh, it um, is quite yes. absurd, you know, to sit here and listen to people, you know, drawing some kind of similarity or drawing some kind of references from a freedom fighting movement. And then you want to bring in democracy into it. It is quite absurd. We are talking about state that has gotten it's, independent yeah. and an independent state. We're not talking about a freedom the fight state, movement. Yeah. Correct. It's completely different. Yeah. And so you don't talk about democracy into it. What yeah. we are talking about, how can we delegitimize the government that are oppressing our people within our land? So it is not about democracy. It correct. is when we have gotten our independence, we are going to practice the true democracy that will be drawn from the our normal uh, traditional rule models and whatever we want to do it to make it work for us. So we so so how do you how do you me, give power to the people? How do you give power to the people? It is not about you don't give power to the people during a freedom fighting. You are fighting war. You're fighting war, for freedom. You cannot give power to the people. You need to make sure you control the territory that the enemies and the oppressors are using to kill your people, first of all, control it by any means possible. Let me come in. 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 Let me come
let me come in. The mere fact that we're talking about Ambazonia, Ambazonia exists as a nation dating back to 1961, known as the former British Southern Cameroons. I want to go into the nitty gritties, but Mr. Simon is absolutely right. If we're talking about functional states recognized by the United Nations, non-functional states that have not been recognized but seeking for their self-determination should not even be considered in the debate of a democracy because we are freedom fighters. We are fighting to have freedom, which is a fundamental tenet of democracy. We are fighting to liberate ourselves, which means we are not even functioning within the so-called democracy. But let's look at it at, at African level, in general, across Africa. Is there democracy? Yes, there is a gradual movement towards democracy. People are increasingly speaking out. We've seen it in the case of Niger. There is mass mobilization at an African level. Diaspora contributions are also counting in. People are increasingly having mobile phones to counteract, to talk against the government, alternative media. This is exactly where we are driving to. And this is the Africa we want to see. However, we don't support any Western nation that wants to impose its sanctions on us for us to embrace their own ideologies. It would not work that way. That is where we keep having a conflict in democracy in Africa. But let's Mr. keep Mr. away Mr. all these quasi-states and non-functional and non-recognizable states by the United Nations. Let me come in here to state that Amazonia, the word, it was Southern Cameroons and Amazonia came after the 1980s in the 1960s. No, Amazonia is just a name. It's just a name. It's just like, uh, it's just like Nigeria. Maybe Amazonia uh, didn't exist before 1980. Amazonia is just a name. We can call it any name. We can call it Mimimefo. We can call it Ivo. But Amazonia's name by nature is the former British Southern Cameroons. Let me use the word former British Southern Cameroons. That was just to clarify the viewers that okay. Amazonia came later and okay. that before Correct. was British Southern yeah. Cameroons. I agree. Mr. Tabang Ivo, so the question now is, we want power to the people. We want democracy in Africa. We want things to change. We don't want the uh, uh, dictatorship in Africa. I agree. How best can we go about it? Making sure that the rights, the, the basic rights of citizens on the continent, the basic rights of people in our respective countries are being respected. How I have, a parsimonial, I have a parsimonial solution to this. Very simple. And I believe everyone on this panel will agree, will agree with me. The mere fact that we youths are sitting here to talk about democracy is a plus. However, we African youths, are interested in using the social media for fashion, showbiz, Gucci, Versace, and all of those. When is the last time you saw African youth without an election phase coming up, without an electoral fraud happening, when is the last time you saw African youth talking about democracy, talking about elections, planning ahead? We never plan ahead. We only wait for when elections come, then you see a, a non-social media candidate who has been preparing for the last five years or seven years of his mandate, prop up with some clientelism, buying votes, he becomes the president through a legitimate election. I will explain why. Mr. Paul Bia of Cameroon won the elections legitimately and landslide victory in, 2012, in 2011. Uh, Tinobu also won the elections. He could be contested, but he won. Guess what? You cannot sit on the social media waiting for elections to come thinking that, oh, your social media candidate is going to be the president. It will not work that way. Votes don't come through social media. They come from the ground. You have to start preparing for political changes now. You don't need to wait seven years to come after brandishing your Facebook pictures and the rest, engaging in showbiz and gossip news and the rest without any political participatory approach. You need to start planning now. Simon Ekpa, for example, is planning now for the Biafra he wants to see in future. It's not suddenly that he'll wake up and say, there is Biafra today. No, it's a long process. He has gone through struggles. Yes, I have Mr. Yes, Mr. To, but the youth must Simon be aware Ekpa. that politics shape our future. And for yes. us to have a bright future, Mr. Ivo, Mr. Ivo, Mr. Ivo, Mr. Tanko, Mr. Tanko, Mr. Tanko, please. Oh, let me, uh, Mr. Mr. Tanko, Ivo, let me correct. Let me let me disagree with you on one thing you said that uh, Bolatinubu won the election. You don't just sit here and begin to make comments on 
other countries that you know nothing about. You don't know how the process of the election happened in 2023. So you can't sit here and say, in Nigeria, Bolatinobu won the election. He never won the election. He never won the election. Why would you sit here as a freedom fighter telling us how somebody won the election? But he's the president. He can be a president. That is why we are sitting, sitting here today to talk about. Mr. Simon, there is one solution, solution to this. We can go on to disagree and debate whether who won the election. But if we don't prepare now, we will have the same thing of the next election. If we don't prepare now, we will keep all of the blaming and complaining. So let me come. Let me come in again. It is my. It is my turn. You called me. You called me. And please Mr. Stand up if you could, gentlemen, if you could gentlemen, 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 let me come in now. Bola Tinubu did not win the election. Bola Mr. Simon, Mr. Case. Simon, let me come in now to just ask you a question. Go ahead. How do we, how do we give power to the people? Because you are saying that today we are talking democracy. We want people to have the voice. We want things to work in favor of the people and that you are ready to do what it takes for African youths to get there. How yes. are you going about it and how do how how are you how, what are you doing to make sure that power gets to the young people and that their rights are not being violated in the process? Thank you very much. Uh I'm gonna give you a very stressed answer to that. You know, I like this place, nobody should interrupt me because this is a very good one. The way we are going to make Africa work and bring true democracy, either the democracy of using our own uh you know modus of democracy like our own cultural and traditional norms is by losing up disintegrating africa along tribal lines that is number one step africa needs to be disintegrated along tribal lines so that you are going to have a nation with like mind people without anybody having a beef without anybody not understanding your language without anybody coming to the table where he is eating rice and you are eating a, a, a pandanium or that you don't understand what he's talking about when he is discussing with his brother. So we need to disintegrate Africa. This is what Europeans did. And they know the secret to the success of their democracy. Because once you have a, a divergent, you know, if you have a, a, a diversity that is a very dangerous one, it can never work. Because everybody will be want to, you know, he want to, he want something he want for his people to happen, and it may be going the other way, conflicting the interest of the other. So, for us to move forward in Africa, we need to begin to understand what did Europeans do, what did Europeans do to come to where they are today? They disintegrated along tribal lines. That's why in Scandinavia today they have different languages, as smaller as they are. They are independent. The, the Soviet Union fell and every, everybody disintegrated because they could not stand the heat of the, of the diversity. When the diversity becomes so dangerous, it is what is happening in Africa today. So any, for us to move forward, please, for us to move forward, like I said, we start from, I have been saying it, that Biafra is going to be the beginning of true democracy in Africa. And I repeat, to, I'm standing here to say it again, because in Biafra, once Biafra is actualized and becoming an independent state, we are going to have a loosed up confederation of Biafra, where every tribe, if I will use the, the word tribe, or every ethnic group that finds himself in Biafra will have independence and will have autonomy. They are going to have their own law. Yeah. Mr. Simon, let me ask you another question here. That, in Cameroon, is, that, for is instance, way, that is the only in, way and the only yes. time. Democracy. In Cameroon, okay, Ms. Mr. Simon, are you saying that all the Igbo people should think alike? I disagree. No, no, no. no it, you know, it is not about everybody, uh, Igbo people thinking alike. No, no, but we have one common thing. You know, we have one thing in common. Progress. Progressive. Success. Uh, 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 can, I, can I speak okay? with you? The issue now is how do we attain progress? Can I can I speak? Can I, can I, can I, because it becomes the issue to be debated. It becomes the issue to be debated within the government. Okay. Yes, we come in. Yes, we have to go around. This policy is going to be done. This policy is going to be done. Then I have to talk a little bit before we come to you. Can you just stop interrupting, interrupt, please? Every Igbo man wants to have a good road. Every Igbo man wants to go to a good school. Every Igbo man wants a good hospital. Every Igbo man wants a good life. So how do you bring it enough to the people? 
it becomes the issue of debate. It becomes the politics we are going to play. So it is not about everybody must. We have like mind. Our like mind is that we, don't, we are progressive. And we want to pro want to progress. So whatever that is going to bring on the table to make us progress and attain that thing we want is what everybody wants to, want to follow. And you don't have any now in Nigeria today. The reason why we are saying let us have autonomy in Nigeria, they say no. Because Igbo people want a good, but they want good road, they want good hospital, they want uh, international airport, we travel a lot. White people in the north don't travel. They don't go anywhere. If they want to travel, they go to Saudi Arabia. So there is nothing in common. They are not progressive. They are nomadic. Why we are progressive? We want to live in good house. They don't live in good house. They live in the bushes. How do you progress with a such kind of diversity? It is absurd. Some people want school. We, the other people in the north don't want to school. They don't want to study. We have what we call quota system in Nigeria, where somebody in the south will get 200 cut-off mark to study law, he cannot get admission into, into, this, into the university. While somebody in the north will get 80, I don't 80, and he'll get admitted. Mr. So, Mr. Simon, are, Mr. Simon, so Mr. these are the problems. Simon, I don't think we should, I don't think we should tribalize yes. this debate. Yes, let's look Mr. At Simon, from I think we should let's, 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 let's not tribalize this debate. Mr. Simon, I will disagree here with you. No, I will have to... We I have to, to disagree with you because we also have citizens in the far north region of Cameroon. And in Cameroon, the far north region is one of the, I should say, the places in the country where illiteracy rate is very high. Development is, is, is almost inexistent. There are bad roads. Access to portable water is not even possible. And then we have Boko Haram also in the far north region. So because of this situation, you cannot say that it is existing because the people do not want development. It's because of bad governance. And that bad is governance. what... And who are the government? Let me, let me, and who are those let, government? The, the government, those in Please power... Go, can we stop personalizing the debates? Let's look at it from the let African go, perspective. There are other countries. Let me go gentlemen gentlemen mr fabrice lena is also part of this panel and mr ivor talked earlier about the need for people to come together knowing that if they want a particular person to lead the country they should make sure that it happened it shouldn't be happening on social media it should not be happening on facebook it should not be happening on on Twitter and so on and so forth. Fabrice Lena is a politician, a grassroots grass politician in Cameroon. He's been advocating for change. He's been he's a political analyst. He's been doing a lot on the ground. Mr. Fabrice, I am sending this question to you to find out from you what should politicians in Africa do to make sure that this actually happens? That leadership doesn't only end at the level of social media. He who is courageous enough should stay back in his country and fight the enemy within. If you die in the process, that is the price to pay as a freedom fighter. And that's the message I want to send to anyone who is a freedom fighter or who calls himself a freedom fighter, whether you come from Cameroon, from South Sudan, from Angola, from Mozambique, or wherever in the continent. I have dared to stay in Cameroon, in Yaoundé, since the crisis started. And of course, Mr. Tampa knows my political party, Popular Action Party of Justice Aya Paul Labine, and the persecution we've gone through, the prisons, the intimidations, and the difficult times we've gone through. It is not about imposing your ideas on the mind and giving people your doctrine as the absolute truth. This conversation we are having is followed by men of integrity and dignity, followers and people who admire one or any of us on this platform. And the attitude we put to the debate is very important. I just beseech if one is given his few minutes to argue, let's argue constructively and just deliver our ideas and pass it on. We do not, no one holds the magic one. No one holds the absolute truth as to how best things should be done in any context. Our ideas are just relative, and it just have few decades to live. But the sustainability of these ideas depend on how we put it on ground, who we were, track record of our activities, and our personalities. I want to emphasize that 
Democracy is important for every society, depending on the leadership, depending on the heart of the leader himself or herself, depending on the institution or the group or the party that carries out this leadership in any context. In Cameroon, our context is peculiar, particular, complex and difficult. If you want to win the heart of the people, you cannot be in London, in Washington, in Toronto, in Berlin, in Paris for five, six, seven, eight years without understanding exactly what people are going through in Boya, in Muyoka, in Bamenda, in Yaoundé, in Douala, in Marowa, or in, uh, let's say, Calabar, in Nigeria, where I visited two years ago, or in Oyo, or in Oka, in Anambra, where I visited one year ago, and then you have absolute declaration about these things. Connecting to your people, irrespective of the circumstances, is important. Lobbying for an umbrella coverage within your network is important. And sometimes as leaders, what you preach and stand on today can come to trap you tomorrow because you did not calculate very well and measure your words, but you thought that you could be the hero of your time to just make declarations. I am giving my opinion. I am just giving my opinion. At the end, at the end you will say your turn. I'm giving my opinion. Just allow me to learn. I wanted to find out from Mr. Fabrice, uh, uh, Mr. Tapang Ivo and Mr. Simon. Uh, in the diaspora, they are calling for lockdown from the diaspora. They are calling for change. They are calling for uh, change as far as the form of the state is concerned in their respective countries. The one autonomy they want independence what do you think about how what do you think about all of this what what their ideas are what do you think about this um this 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 um they are what do you think about the activities from abroad i respect you very much and i respect every other one on the panel i respect everyone's opinion I am not prejudicial to anybody's opinion. I just pray that um, when each person is given his few minutes to talk, let the person talk to the end. Um, if I'm talking too much, maybe the moderator should remind me of that. But it's always very important. Just go ahead and talk. Yeah, it's important that you are the one to moderate because if I don't go to the end of my idea, I get interrupted by another panel. It's not very good for me. It's not a healthy a conversation. I'm not responding. I just asked a question. Yeah, um, everything evolves around politics. No one can say that he's doing activism without politics or fighting for freedom without politics. That is politics in manifestation. We are talking about politics because democracy is an aspect of politics. Democracy is a form of governance and government is politics. So we are talking about politics. And I do not agree with the issues of lockdown unless there is an organization within Africa that measures whether these lockdowns are having positive or negative impact on the people concerned. In as much as there is no organization or a barometer to measure these, I am not sure that the people are comfortable with lockdowns. Because the humanitarian, economic, and social impact of these is on the vulnerable women, children, girls, who on these days of lockdown do not have accessibility to basic necessities. A woman who is pregnant and supposed to give birth to that particular day of lockdown may die in the house or have complications, which might be a psychological trauma for the rest of her life or some kind of business people who will have urgencies and to catch up, they might not because these lockdowns are on the days. There, there, are, there are thousand strategies to advocate for change, for autonomy, for whatever agenda you have without necessarily making the impact to be more, the percentage of the negative impact to be more on the people. 
unless I insist you have a barometer to say that your people are comfortable with what you are saying. And of course, if we were to take the contemporary issues making headline in African news, we will say that the people of Niger will prefer a coup because the, the, the former leader was making some ties that did not suit the people. And the people came in their normals, in their different stadiums to, to, to acclaim such a kind of popular action might be an approval of someone's agenda. But without such, it, if it is just about the Facebook conversations, about yes, the WhatsApp discussions, that is no measure. Yes, Mr. That is no measure. So I disapprove of any control from the diaspora. Mr. Fabrice, can you hear me? We're about to conclude on this discussion. I want to ask a final question because you talked about diaspora and people who are agitating from the diaspora and demanding for change in their respective countries. I should say that the diaspora has been playing a lot of role, very, very instrumental role, because many people who are sometimes back home cannot do the things that people are in the diaspora, in the diaspora are capable of doing. For instance, fighting against right violations, uh, calling for press, um, uh, press freedom and fighting against press censorship. I, for instance, I'm a victim of, of press censorship in Cameroon and I've done my own part when it comes to fighting against censorship in, in the country. So let's talk about the role of the diaspora now in, in advocating for democracy, the role of the diaspora in advocating for democracy in Africa. Uh, what, should, what should the diaspora do to make things different? Let me start with you, Mr. Ivor, Ivor Tapan Ivor. What should yeah. the diaspora do to make things different? Yeah, thanks, Mimi. Uh, just to make a correction here, uh, the fact that we are not freedom fighters on the ground doesn't make doesn't mean that we are not freedom fighters, as Mr. Fabrice uh, uh, dubiously explained. The fact that you are a politician back home and uh, and, 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 you're, and you have not been arrested, you have not been killed, like other politicians whom I know, um, other lawyers whom I know, it means you are playing to the gallery of the of the dictator in power. Uh, let me keep that aside. Um, let me talk about what the diaspora contribution is all about. First, we are seated in a, I would say, multipolar world. Things have evolved. We're in a globalized world, what Marshall McLuhan would call a global village. We use the social media. We communicate instantaneously to our people back home. We are engaging in the same strategies that Gandhi engaged in. Biafra is doing the same lockdown that Gandhi did. Biafra is doing the same civil disobedience that Gandhi did. Ambazonia is doing the same boycotts that Gandhi did. Why should we help Gandhi as a hero and hail Simon Ekpa and Ivo as non-heroes? It doesn't make any sense to me. But again, I want to make sure that we are tailoring this conversation to the African perspective. I don't want, to, I don't want us to tribalize it maybe to Biafra or, or Nigeria. It, I know there are people watching from Kenya, people watching from Ethiopia, people watching from other countries. They want to also hear the concerns. We in the diaspora, if I can sit in the diaspora and send money back home to my people, to my family back home, to help them economically, every month I do that to help my own family whom the government has neglected. If I can help the people back home economically, why shouldn't I help the people back home from abroad politically? Give me a reason why. The government hasn't ever stopped me from helping my family back home, but the government is trying to stifle my freedom from helping political changes, engaging in political changes back home. The government hasn't stopped me, I'm talking at an African perspective, hasn't stopped me from investing back home, but the government has stopped me from investing in political changes back home and has blacklisted and exiled me. So how do you marry these two? The diaspora has a huge concern when it comes to transforming political um, reforms back home. Look, we are all in the diaspora. We use the social media. The Arab Spring, is, it comes to mind readily, even though it was corrupted at some point when it came to Libya. But I believe that our advocacy for change must start now, not when an election is coming up in the next seven years. Not when Tinobu has frauded the election, as maybe there could be a debate about Tinobu and uh, Obi, who, whatever happened. 
You will yes, not only talk about that the that and it that dies that out. out. No, let's start planning now for the change we want to see tomorrow. We yes. youths should start that publishing that pictures that of hush puppy in flash, yes. flashy jets and wearing all kinds of Gucci. It doesn't help the transformation of Africa. Mr. Mr. Tapan, I the transformation I of Africa are daily yes. debates like this. Mr. Tapan Ibo, sometimes I wonder if you actually hear me or you are just ignoring me. <laughs> but I wanted to ask, because you mentioned Gandhi, he was in India, actually abroad, like you said, but he actually didn't impose conditions that affected his fellow Indians. He was in India, like you said, but he did not impose conditions that affected his own citizens. Can you say the same for happenings in the English-speaking parts of Cameroon today? Again, yeah. as Mr. Simon Ekpa had, has rightly put it, I don't want us to come back to it. We don't have a country. There is no English-speaking regions. We have Amazonia. We have Biafra. We don't have Calabar. We have Biafra. We don't have a country yet. We are fighting for freedom, meaning we don't even have the freedom. And we will never successfully please 100% of people. There will be that Judah in every 12. Mr. Simon, you have the floor now. Tell us um, yeah, thank you. what, how can... How can we reshape the role of the diaspora in terms of promoting democracy on the continent? Thank you very much. Actually, uh, uh, Ivo has said a lot of things that uh, is in my mind. But however, I wouldn't say much without addressing uh, Fabric, uh, what he said last. Uh, you, know, you know, one thing, how do we know the politicians, especially the corrupt one, is when we talk about the sit at home civil, civil disobedience, they will be telling you how people are dying. The pregnant women, this is the, you know, you know, so whenever you hear them saying this, you know that there's a corrupt politician saying it. Because the same people will not talk about those who are dying when they were not sit at home. <laughs> they didn't tell you how many women died because there is no hospital in their villages. They did not tell you how many people died because they don't have the money to pay to doctor before doctor can attend to them. So what makes you different from the government in place that is not providing <laughs> that health care? That's exactly what I'm saying now. That what makes you different from the governments? We are going to use every mechanism known to man and known to the devil, if I may use that, to liberate our people from the government then give them the life they want. And that is exactly... Do you prefer a conventional war to this civil disobedience? In Ukraine today, are you going to ask people, why are the bombs dropping there? They are fighting for freedom. freedom. These are people who already have independence. They have Correct. their own country. Today, they are being invented. Are, are you going to say that the women is now, the, 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 you know, that the, the president of Ukraine have committed a, a atrocity Atrocities. for engaging Russia, trying to liberate his people? No. You see, when you are talking about a freedom fighting, trying to liberate your people from subjugation, from slavery. You use everything, everything, everything you can just think of. And the only thing you are thinking is to make sure you destroy the enemy. So does, so does freedom include punishing the same people you are fighting the freedom? It depends on what you understand by punishing. What do you mean by punishing? Is the punishing you are giving them worse than what they are not punishments? There is we nothing like punishment children here. Shooting, children no, 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 no. Wait, it's not punishment. Called, it is not punishment. It is called measures. Measures. It is not punishment. It, it In our own perspective and from our own context, it is not punishment. It is measures. And those measures are not targeted at our people, but targeted at the government. And remember, the government cannot function without the people. This is something you people should understand. There is no government without the people. So when we are doing these things, we are not targeting our people. It doesn't make sense. We are targeting the government. And let me tell you now, from the Biafra uh, side, we've made Nigeria government lost over $20 billion for the last two years. The records are there. So is it the people that are losing the money? The answer is no. Because we still give them the opportunity to do their businesses at the end of the day. So what we are targeting is to also delegitimize the government, making sure that we rubbish the government before international community to show them that they don't have any capacity to control the territory that we are controlling. Today, we have made that very clear and the international community, everybody knows for the past two years, Nigeria government is struggling and threatening people. What about that? They are threatening to shut down market 
for those who did not open market. So who is now, you know, threatening the, the, the citizen? Is it us or the government? The government also threatened to shut down the market. They even killed the Lenugu, Lenugu state. They killed many people who did not open their shop. Why are you people not talking about those, those ones? Why are you focusing on these particular measures that we are putting to delegitimize the government? And it is working for us. So please, when you see politicians like this, they are evil, completely the, the, evil. The, 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 point, the point is that, Mr. Simon, we are advocating or talking about change on the continent. And that is the change. That is what we, we are talking about. You can change. have change. You can never have change with this kind of mindset. No, you can never have change. You can never have change. Mr. Simon, please listen. And if we are talking about change, we are looking at people who are different from those who are already there in power, who are still in power. We don't, we are not talking about those who come and impose the same pain like you are saying, who will come and impose their decisions, impose their conditions on the people. So let me move right away to Mr. Fabrice Lena. Mr. Fabrice, how can the diaspora utilize the power that they've got? Because whether you like it or not, the diaspora youths, they've got the power, they've got the voice, they've got what it takes to bring about change in their respective countries and across the continent. How can they be better utilize this power that they have got? <clears throat> yeah, of course, uh, I acknowledge the fa fact that um, um, the diaspora of African countries are playing a great role to emancipate the continent and of course we have a strong diaspora of Cameroonians, of Nigerians, of Ghanaians, just to name a few. And um, I have also had the opportunity to travel to different parts of the world and meet some of these uh, diaspora groupings in cultural associations and uh, meetings. And with my interaction with them, I can say most of the people who are doing well in these different parts of the world are the finest of brains in their different fields or sectors, um, be it those who are engineers, uh, be it the teachers, be it um, uh, intellectuals contributing to the academic world. These guys are incredibly great. They are doing so well. And of course, we can't also deny that they contribute strongly and so well to the um, economic well-being of their different families and their respective countries. When it comes to politics, uh, opinions of people are their opinions and should not be censored by anyone. I do not agree and will never succumb to people who think that they have the absolute roadmap to the welfare of people. This is completely out of place, and I will not uh, succumb to that. Well, if Mr. Epa or Simon thinks that um, he has the capacity to judge and say one is corrupt or evil, he has his own um, uh, opinion to give out. That is his opinion, and I respect his opinion. I won't judge him to be bad or evil, but of course, when you're still in existence, till the end of what you want to prove to the people, then history has its record on you and on your generation to follow. Uh, that said, I will, I will say to all diasporans who are doing their best to see that their country move on the right track, I salute them. To all diasporans who do everything within their capacity to minimize cost and loss of lives, I salute them. In my politics, my activities, I do not agree to any violent actions that will take lives. Human lives are precious and priceless and should not be put in front of any political agenda or freedom fighting agenda. We have learned a lot of lessons from history, recent history and contemporary realities of our continent where people come as freedom fighters and turn out to be the very dictators that are consuming the people. This is true fact. We can see them from other parts of Africa. That is not uh, important. We mention them every time. And of course, I respect every diaspora person who sits and thinks about his community and those who make meaningful contributions to their community. This is what they should do, of course. We cannot forget our roots. We should not forget where we come from. I want to also say something. We, I... we are always we are always we are always here to to have a panel like this to talk about 
very very pertinent topics but time is not on our side so just your final words i'll begin with mr simon mr simon what is the way forward on this world democracy day um how can we make things better for the continent um what is the best way to go about it thank you very much the best way to go about it is starting but from you the journalist not being biased in, in your report making sure that uh, you you know you push to, to the public that's what why we right. gave you the voice to but, take uh, without, I, would, I don't have every right you know to say because i have a lot to say today you know we are the same no, we we'll bring on board next time. Like I said, we can talk for the next 10 hours. Yeah. But we try so, to balance the panel so that everyone can come on board and share their thoughts. Yes. But then anyway. we cannot talk the whole time because we have other programs to coming up. So yes. anyway, the, the way to move forward and bring through democracy to Africa is what the Biafra people, of which I am the Prime Minister, is doing. Today we are inaugurating the Biafra. Uh, government uh, administrative office in the United States, Maryland, Baltimore. And in next month, we are having the Biafra self-referendum convention, first ever self-referendum convention. It means that we are giving the Biafra people the opportunity to choose by themselves how they want to live. That is the true democracy. When you give the people the opportunity to decide and so we are doing that and exactly towing that line. So you, we in Africa, we don't need to start killing. We don't need AK-47 when people say, I don't want again. I don't want to be part of you. It is universal human right. Allow the person to go. You mustn't uh, say you, you will die here with me. No, that is not democracy. If Ambazonia cannot conduct a referendum to decide whether they want to be part of Cameroon, are you going to say it's the only democracy? If uh, Biafra cannot conduct a referendum and say they don't, want to, they don't want to be part of Nigeria again, and you say no, it must be part of Nigeria, that is not democracy. So that's why my own perspective of democracy in Africa, there is no democracy anywhere in Africa. Because anytime any uh, group spring up and say, we don't want to be part of you again, you will see military there, anywhere in, the, in, in Africa. It, we must end in fight. It's not a democracy. So the West, even though everyone, every, every once in a while, people use Catalonia to give example. Yeah, they're not fighting for freedom, but they have autonomy. They have autonomy. In most of those uh, countries in Africa, they don't even give them autonomy. So we need to begin to see the need to allow people who don't want to be part of you again to go. It is just the same thing like in marriage. When the girl, husband says, I don't want to marry you again, you don't force the person to marry you. Otherwise, it's going to end to your death. So Africa should look up to Biafra. We are coming. And it is going to happen very, very soon. We are going to lead by example. So everybody should focus on what Biafrans are doing and what we are going to do in the nearest future. Thank you very much. Mr. Tapang, yeah, Mr. Tapang Ivor, what is the way forward for Cameroon, for, for Africa as a whole? Um, what is the best way to go about instilling um, democracy on the continent? Yeah, thanks. I, I did not know that I was coming on this show to talk about uh, self-determination, fight for the creation of new countries and the rest. I don't think it's even related to any to the central agenda of today's World Democracy Day. Uh, that's another let's let's make another topic for that i don't know someday but i would say there are a couple of key points that i'll gather from everyone seated here simon ekpa mentioned something which was very critical and i want to emphasize on it uh first uh the dissolution of borders tribal borders is great but at a national level i want to make sure that this is done in the african declaration the, the formation of the african union even the seat declaration the Lagos plan of action that was all rolled out that at some point all african countries should dissolve their borders form a union or african union or united states of africa where we can have international commerce international trade that is a way forward towards staving us staving off uh, bad governance and the rest second democracy comes with its own perk of hypocrisy and this is the biggest challenge africa is facing today France supporting Ukraine, but France will not support uh, the coup that is happening in uh, Niger. France supported the coup that happened in Ukraine in 2014, 
but will not support the same coup that the coup that happens in Nigeria, nor the coup plotters. France and log ahead with the United States, all them beacons of democracy. Africa should be ready to face these hypocrites. I will say it as bluntly as it is. Although democracy is good, it's a good political philosophy. Why facing this hypocrisy? Why standing out to this hypocrisy? Why standing against this hypocrisy? We must also adopt changes to the kind of democracy we need as Africans. Lastly, I want to also mention that we Africans, like my uh, friend seated here, Fabrice Lena, yeah, you are a politician, but guess what? The politician you're fighting against, Mr. Paul Beer, who is about 92 years old, has ensured that the next upcoming elections is prepared way in much in advance for his son to take over. What are you doing right now? What are we youths doing right now? You in the diaspora, what are you posting on your page every day? Are you posting about your fashion show and your new suits, or are you posting about some political changes that you want to see? When we start engaging in political transformation processes, even before the election, we will see a massive, a mass mobilization of youths leaning more towards political changes than leaning more towards Afrobeats and all of those nonsense that you guys keep watching on Facebook. This is horrible. And I want to summarize here, Mimi. Ask any African youth, oh, why are you not posting about this happening in your country? Why are you not posting? They say, I don't like being there on politics, yeah? I don't like this nonsense. That's politics is for you. That is the African mindset. But when election comes, Peter Obi has been, uh, has, has been, the election has been rigged and Peter Obi is, is no longer the choice or whatever. You see him going on Facebook, shouting and crying, fraud, 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 election rigging. No, these guys plan five, seven years in advance. We Africans, if we want that change, we must start now. We have to start yesterday. We okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tapang. thank you, Mr. Tapang. Ivor, your point is very well noted. I will give the final words to Mr. Fabrice Lena. Like Tapang Ivor is saying, the, uh, the time to do it is now or never. Do you have anything to say about that as a politician? Uh, of course, I've always been doing my own part of the job, civic engagement, uh, political participation, civic education to my fellow young people. I always tell them everyone is neck deep into politics. Politics is part of human existence. Of course, you should get to understand the basic things you need to know, which is knowing and uh, knowing your full rights, your constitution, uh, electoral codes of your country, political actors. Most especially, young people in the continent need to understand track records of people who come up to be self-declared leaders, to be uh, they are politicians, those who are in front, those who manage political parties, civil society organizations. They, they should be comprehensive understanding of the track record of these people. They should be because it makes you to have a balanced view of who you're voting, who you're supporting, who you're commenting, who you're liking, who you're projecting, or who you're contributing for. is very important. I know that there is always always um, a huge gap between those in power and those coming up to challenge them, like the case for us, PAP in Cameroon, challenging the uh, incumbent president, government, uh, power in place, which of course is a difficult one. It's a difficult task given that they have been there for the past um, past 60 years. But this is not impossible because I want to call my my um, co-panelist, Mr. Ivo, that you've been singing about civic engagement, political participation, uh, young people taking the consciousness. It's a good thing. Of course, you should also change narrative. I know that leadership is flexibility. If you have an agenda and you see that the agenda is no more adaptable to the context, you should, of course, acknowledge this to the people. Come clearly to the people and tell them that, of course, yes, this is, this is, this is leadership. Tell the people, yes, I stood for this and I see it's not working. And then I want to say, hey, guys, I'm sorry. And I, I think we should take this direction. That is leadership. What I'm standing for today is a new federal republic for Cameroon. And if, of course, over time, I find that this doesn't work and I am unable to fulfill the promises I've made to people, I started politics relatively very young, I will come to the people and say, I'm sorry, and I'm quitting from this because I have failed to deliver to the people what I promised them. This is honor, integrity, and respect for whosoever that is standing up to say something. And I always say we should not be very sure of whatever we are declaring to because 
The complexities of the international community is not always in the favor of African continent. Uh, today, we have Mr. UN, we have trans, we have these people. These guys are uh, at loggerhead. Mr. Uh, just allow me to round up now. One second. Yes, these guys are at loggerhead, and the issue of Cameroon or Nigeria is not in their fight anytime soon. The divided United Nations will not seek to take resolutions on Cameroon or Nigeria anytime soon concerning issues of self determination, concerning democracy, or the context of Africa. My word is simple. Each young leader, evaluate yourself. Push your agenda without necessarily attacking, castigating, or seeking for the death of your fellow Africans. We are all Africans, motherland first, and the future is bright for us. Thank you so much, Mr. Fabrice Lena, for joining us today. It was a pleasure. Thank you. I'm grateful. And thank you, Mimi. Mr. Simon Ekpa, thank you for joining us from Finland. It was a wonderful time uh, with you here. We had a wonderful time with you here on DW Africa. Talk to you some other time again. Thank you. Thank because you you've got a lot to talk about. Thank you. thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Mr. Ivor Tapang, thank you for joining us from the United States. We will be happy to have you some other time again. You were very, very insightful. Thank you and have a wonderful evening. Amen. Thank you very much, Mimi. Good job. And just, just to note that uh, our guests were Fabrice Lena. Fabrice Lena is a political activist. He is a politician. He has been a politician since he was young. And all our panelists today were below 40. Uh, Fabrice Lena has also been doing a lot to promote grassroots democracy in Cameroon. We also had Tapang Ivor Tanku. He is a former Fulbright scholar and an advocate for an independent state called Ambazonia in Cameroon's English-speaking regions. We also had uh, Simon Ekpa. He is a lawyer by training and profession. He uh, was uh, he is the designated president, uh, prime minister of the Biafra Republic government in exile. He joined us from Finland. And before we end today's program, I would like to note that I thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today, for taking your time to come on board and be part of this very, very insightful debate on the sidelines of the world democracy they were looking at democracy in africa and how it can bring about change the change that the african population need i want to make it very very clear that dw africa doesn't in any way endorse or subscribe to the views raised here on this program tonight but as a media that is meant for the minds this network believes in giving everyone the opportunity to add their views that is why we saw a very very diverse panel here tonight they were here to express themselves and tell us what they think about democracy what they think about change on the continent we have heard from all the panelists, like I said earlier, Mr. Simon Ekpa, uh, Mr. Ivor Tapang, who uh, believe that they will do what it takes to bring change, include lockdowns and sit at homes that some may say deprive them of their freedom, their liberty. But to Tapang Ivor and Mr. Simon Ekpa, this is the way to go as far as fighting for freedom is concerned. However, they also argue that they have the support of the people. Fabrice Leda on his part is coming from a very, very different perspective. He stated categorically that no one should impose their views on others and that violence is not the way forward in bringing about change and nurturing democracy on the continent. But the fact remains that the passion we saw on the program today represents the quest for young Africans to take control of their future. What do you think? What do you think about democracy in Africa? What do you think about democracy in your respective countries? We want to know your thoughts in the comment section. The debate continues. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Mimi Mefo. This is DW Africa. Goodbye.